Hello everyone, I was working on my Vidoc Thoughts video, but that is going to have to wait until tomorrow because Bungie dropped an Omega progression slash investment system info bomb on us. So we're going to talk about that first. The soft cap for Beyond Light is 1200. The hard cap, aka the powerful reward cap is 1250 and the pinnacle cap is 1260 in case that was not implied already. First off, when Beyond Light hits, all gear will be automatically leveled up to 1050. If you have items higher than that, then those higher items will stay at those higher levels. Next, you will be able to earn some powerful cap reward items from grinding core activities like Strikes, Crucible Gambit, and Seasonal Drops. Bungie says it'll be much faster to grind out powerful items by doing the things that actually say they give powerful items, but if you just want to grind strikes all day, it seems like you'll periodically get a powerful item from grinding those activities, although we don't know how periodically just yet. Next, starting next season, quote, gear received from collections and turning in tokens will have a lower power than in previous seasons. Gear earned through token purchases will be 20 power below your power level and collection buybacks will be capped at 1050 power, end quote. This method of leveling was used to slowly level yourself up after getting a big upgrade by getting a bunch of smaller upgrades in every other slot by buying stuff from vendors. Now, you will not be able to use this method to level up. If you're familiar with the blueing up method by getting rare blue quality world drops in between big power upgrades, it seems like that will still be a viable tactic to min-max your leveling, something we'll discuss in my how to level up to 1260 video that I inevitably do every single season, even though leveling hasn't really changed that much. I've detailed this method in previous leveling videos though if you wanna go check it out right now. Next up, for season 12, Nothing will be happening to planetary materials. But in season 13, vendors will no longer accept phase glass needles, alkane dust, simulation seeds, or seraphite. These are all materials from destinations that are going away. Spider will have a small glimmer exchange for these materials, but it'll be best to spend these materials before season 13. Some other items will be removed at the end of Season of Arrivals. Things like old faction tokens, expired ramen coupons, you know, stuff that doesn't really do anything. There is a laundry list of items in the description that are getting removed. I would check that out. Next up is the overall bounty system. Except that it's not next, really, because Bungie said they're still working on it and we can expect more news on it before it's targeted Season 13 release. Next is the Season Pass. It's mostly staying the same, but Bungie wants to change the way you earn Bright Dust and to move towards account-driven paths instead of character-driven paths so that you don't need to grind every single weekly three times on every single character to maximize your dust gains. The Season Pass Free Path will offer 7,500 Bright Dust, the Paid Path 3,000 Bright Dust, but weekly bounties will now give 100 dust instead of 200. Season 13 will have more information on bright dust accumulation. Next up is the spider, who has remained largely the same since he showed up. Uh, starting in Season 12, the spider will no longer sell legendary shards because people just didn't really use that function that much. Instead, spider will now sell enhancement prisms for... 400 legendary shards per prism, and you can only get three per week. Enhancement cores are changing too. Instead of increasing in cost every time you buy one, Spider will sell you five per day for 30 shards each to create a more clear experience. It's also way cheaper to buy five cores in this way compared to the current method, which costs over double the amount of shards than it will be in Season 12. Next up, Sparrows. All Sparrows will now be instant summon by default in Season 12. Any Sparrows with instant summon can be dismantled in Season 12 to dig for different perks if you want different perks on your Sparrow. Finally, 
Bright Engrams will now contain items from Season 1 to three seasons prior to the current season. So, for example, Season 12 Bright Engrams will contain items from Season 1 through 9, Season 13 will have 1 through 10, etc. On top of all of that, Luke Smith was on a surprise stream on the 29th, talking about some stuff. The major thing that he talked about was Transmog. Now, Transmog is not happening in Season 12. There is no exact date yet. But, Transmog will use the Collections tab. This means that you will not need to hang on to old armor in order for it to be used in Transmog, which is fantastic news and is exactly what I wanted to have happened. Thank you very, very much. Huge news. Luke Smith also talked about the size of Beyond Light. It will be bigger than Shadowkeep, which I thought was going to be the case, but probably not bigger than Forsaken. It is difficult for the Bungie team to make Forsaken-sized chunks of content nowadays due to budget and time constraints, while also putting more emphasis on seasonal content than they have before. This is somewhat inspiring news when it comes to seasonal content. Seems like Bungie is looking to flesh out things a bit more season to season. We hopefully won't have something like Season of Dawn transition into Season of the Worthy. Dawn, pretty good. Worthy, eh. Unfortunate that we probably won't have a Forsaken-sized expansion for Beyond Light, but, you know, what can you do, right? What can you do? All right, let's talk some thoughts on all of this news. I like the addition of more powerfuls for just grinding away at core playlists. It gives some kind of reward, even if it's small, to people who just want to smash their face at the Strike playlist or Crucible all day. I really don't see much wrong with that in the grand scheme of the game. This powerful reward addition is, I feel like, directed towards players who just want to boot up and go. And while I'm sure some hardcore players will find a way to really maximize this extra benefit, I don't see much wrong with occasionally giving casual strike playlist grinders an extra powerful reward every few strikes. Using tokens to level up at the tower. Personally, kind of glad this is going away. This method was really monotonous and didn't really involve playing the game, but rather revolved around spending thousands of tokens at vendors to try to get as much leveling juice as possible without actually playing the game. Not to mention that this also throws a wrench in the whole transfer your weapons to second and third characters and get free levels at the tower leveling strategy too, which I also don't really mind that being broken now. That being said, not really sure what I'm gonna do with the thousands of tokens I have right now. I think it would be neat to have maybe like a big token turn in, like 250 tokens or something to get a 60 plus stat item guaranteed from a vendor, something for people with insane amount of tokens to buy, but you'll just be able to transmog your high stat armor into whatever you want anyway, so I guess maybe that kind of makes it pointless. I don't know. The question I have here now is, what the hell do I do with my tokens? What do I do with all of these things? I'll get the new vendor stuff, and then after that, it's just back to hoarding. Maybe just give me a 20 token for 3 shard exchange of the vendor, because that's basically what I did before. Turn in a bunch of tokens, get a legendary item, dismantle it, get my shards. Or better yet, maybe it's just time to kill off tokens entirely and try something else. Getting rid of planetary materials in Season 13 from destinations going into the DCV leaves me with two questions. Number one. Does completely removing these materials imply that these destinations will never return? And two, does the complete removal of these materials potentially mean the complete removal of all planetary materials sometime in the far future? To be honest, I think planetary materials are just kind of an outdated thing at this point in the game, and you can just buy them all at Spider anyway. I do wonder if they just get outright removed, like a year from now or something. Either way, this is a warning from Bungie telling you to spend materials of destinations that are going into the DCV because in Season 13, those materials, well, they sound like they're gone. As for other old materials and items disappearing, you know, I'm a little sad about it, but I just liked having, you know, faction tokens and other stuff as a novelty in my vault. Like, oh, you can only get these in Season 3. 
they're all ultimately pointless, so I'm not too bent out of shape about it. It was just a fun little thing. Bright dust changes. Not seeing a lot of happy people about this, and I can understand why. Bungie is reducing the amount of dust per weekly from 200 to 100. Not really sure why they're doing that. Not to mention they're making them account wide, drastically reducing the amount of dust you can get on a week to week basis. Dust grinders, you're probably pissed off. I get it. Non grinders and more casual players, you're maybe a little more excited at Bright Dust being thrown into the season pass because now you can earn dust a bit more reliably instead of having to spend your time grinding weeklies when you'd rather be doing something else. Bungie said back in May they wanted to make getting Bright Dust easier and did say one character players would get significantly more dust. Now, I believe they accomplished both goals here. Easier? For sure, the season pass is easier than weeklies, definitely. Significantly more dust for one character players? I could see that, absolutely. Average player will probably spend less time and earn more dust based on what I imagine the average player does with their time on the game with these changes. But what was not explained back then was that it would potentially be at the cost of more dedicated players not being able to earn as much dust as they could previously, which is what dust grinders would say is, quote, not really that cool at all, end quote. Would really like to see if pricing changes on any bright dust items, my guess is no, but for more dedicated players at the moment, this seems really rough. I personally gave up on grinding weekly bounties because I could not get myself to care about Gambit weeklies. So even I will potentially be seeing more dust come my way, which is why at the moment, I personally don't mind the change. But for those who do grind those bounties and do grind those weeklies, I totally understand your pain. As for the spider changes, pretty indifferent to them. No more legendary shards and whatever. Enhancement prisms, I don't know who the hell's going to spend 400 shards on prisms, but if you want to, knock yourself out. Enhancement core changes will hurt people who bought two per day for 30 shards. You now need to spend 60 to get the same amount, which kind of sucks. But if you want to buy more than three in a single day, it is a better option for you. Buying less, eh, buying more, that's better. Finally, Instant Summon Sparrows for All is an amazing quality of life adjustment. I think literally everyone in Destiny appreciates this change. Nothing else to say on that. That is your investment slash progression breakdown and thoughts. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.